Hello everyone. Welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I'm Lisa Curcio and here is tonight's YouTube Live. We're going to be talking about coloring tips tonight. And while we're doing that, I've got a project I'm going to be demonstrating for you. I'm ex super excited. If this is your first time here joining us, thanks for being here. And if you're returning, welcome back. So glad that you're here. I see we've got people from all over, including Australia. Please chime in and say hi and say where you're from. If this is your first time on YouTube Live and you are joining us live, you're gonna notice that there's a slight delay between the time that I speak and the actual time that you're hearing it, but it also plays true in when you're typing me. So if you're typing me a comment, I'm not gonna get it right away. There's gonna be that same delay. I want to introduce you to Megan. Megan's name is in blue and there'll be a little wrench next to her name. Megan is my virtual YouTube assistant. And once I get stamping, it's really hard to keep up with the comments if I'm supposed to be stamping. So that's Megan's job. She's here to help interact and make sure she's getting the questions answered that I can't get to. I'll do my best to try to catch some, but you know what? I don't wanna to do too much chit chatting and not get to stamping because that's what it's all about. So as I said, tonight's live is about some coloring techniques. And I'm gonna create a card with you from start to finish. I'm not just gonna give you coloring techniques per se, but I'm also gonna give you some tips on distressing. And we're gonna be using some brand new product from the holiday catalog. Once again, welcome everyone. Now, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're interested in Stampin' Up! products, there are two catalogs that are out right now. There is the holiday catalog and the annual catalog. If you are interested in these copies and you don't already have a demonstrator, like I said, I would be more than happy to send you complimentary copies. All you have to do is leave me a comment below. Now, if you're here watching the replay, welcome. You can comment in the comment section outside of the live chat as well, and I'll make sure that I get back to you. Please remember that if you're expecting a reply during the live chat, I will not be able to type that to you. I'll try to catch it or Megan will. I can reply to you, however, in the replay chat below. I hope that kind of makes sense. I think if you come back and visit, you'll be able to see. All right, let's not get uh, waste any more time. Let's get started. I'm going to turn the camera down. Here we go. All right, and then just give me a couple seconds here to get my camera set up and get you guys zoomed in so you can see pretty good. And I am going to refresh my iPad so that I can see your comments. And I want to make sure that that is on mute because, boy, there's nothing worse than hearing feedback, right? All right, I've got a piece of smoky slate cardstock here. I have cut this four and a quarter by eight and a half, and I've already scored it in half just ahead of the video. We're gonna make a smaller card today. I've been a big fan of these. Sometimes when we have smaller images, it's a lot easier to create the card on a smaller piece of cardstock than trying to fill a large piece. And that's just a great tip for you. Don't sway away from those smaller images because you don't know what else to put on the paper. Cut your cardstock down and make a smaller card. Now I've had numerous people ask me about this. Well, does this fit in a standard envelope? It does. It fits in the standard medium size envelopes with Stampin' Up, which is equivalent to an A2. For those of you that are really zealous, you can go ahead and make your own envelopes using the envelope punch board. I'm gonna do some texturizing on the base of this card, and I'm gonna be using the tin tile embossing folder. Now I know you can't see it really well until I get it slipped in there, but I'm gonna slip this on very much like a slip cover would be. So I'm gonna put half of it in and I'm leaving my crease here at the top. And one thing I wanna call your attention to is you're gonna see how thick this embossing folder is compared to most folders, which are about literally half of this depth. This is gonna leave a very dynamic and deep impression in the cardstock. So let me move this out of the way. I'm gonna bring my big shot in. Hopefully you all can hear me pretty good. Oh, we've even got people here from England. How exciting is that? It's great. I'm glad that you're all here from all over. I'm gonna be using the Big Shot platform and I've got my embossing folder here. I wanna make sure when I laid this down that I didn't ruin my alignment. I'm going with the seam side first. And you're gonna notice I didn't put one of the clear cutting mats down on the bottom. And the reason you're not gonna do that is simply because of the depth of the folder. You don't need it. So let me realign this because I got all excited and got messed up. I'm gonna put that right here on top of the platform. And I'm gonna put a clear mat though over the top. You wanna make sure you always cover up your projects to make sure that you protect them. We'll give that a little bit of a push and we'll crank that through the big shot. 
And I'm going to pull that out this other end. Let me set that way off here to the side. And let me undo this little sandwich here so that you can see. And here we've got our card base, perfectly crooked. How do you like that? This is what happens when you ta talk and stamp at the same time. But you know what? We're going with it. Um, I would probably, if I'm going to, well, actually I will. I'll emboss the other side as well. I'll make this the back and then we'll go ahead and use this as the front. So that's what I would do if you guys weren't all watching me and I don't want to waste any of your time. So I know your time is precious. So I want to get down to it. I'm more, it's more important for me to be able to teach you the techniques about what I'm doing. So the next step here is we're going to be doing some distressing to this. So I want to add a little bit of texture and color to this. And I'm going to be using the Crumb Cake ink pad. And I'm going to be using a wedge of the stamping sponges. And I come round and I cut them in about five wedges. So I can hold my hands here to keep them clean. Now I want to point out the tin tile embossing folder to you. Let me grab my holiday catalog here really, really quick. I flagged the page to make it easy. The holiday catalog, this is all part of the Country Lane Suite. And you'll see the stamp set we're gonna to use tonight here. And then you're gonna see these accessories down below. Here's that embossing folder that I just used, the tin tile. Now I've done several videos here on YouTube about this folder, including the galvanized metallic papers, which are amazing because it's gonna look really like tin. But we're gonna be using some of these other products tonight as well. So I'm gonna set that aside. Here we've got our crumb cake ink pad and I've got my wedge of sponge. Again, I'm gonna hold it here. I'm gonna ink up my sponge. Now I'm gonna make sure when I ink it up, I'm gonna tap off a little bit of ink because I wanna make sure that I can control the coverage. When you come straight off the ink pad, it's gonna be pretty concentrated. It's gonna be kind of strong. And I wanna make sure that this looks fairly consistent. You know, when you're distressing things, you're gonna have areas that are darker and some that are lighter. So that's totally fine. So again, I'm loading up the sponge and then I'm gonna tap off some ink and then I am lightly going to start rubbing on here. And you're gonna see that that gray is gonna to start to look more like it's patinaed. So it's gonna look a little bit more aged. And like I said, look at that perfectly crooked background. But you know what? I have a feeling by the time I'm done with this, that it's not gonna be so noticeable. Because tonight we're gonna to do a little bit something different on this small card. I'm actually gonna put a little bit larger image on here, which is not something I typically do for a small card. But I wanna show you how well that it works. The great thing about the distressing is you're gonna see that it's gonna be bringing out the impressions from the folder. This is really simple. This is something even the kids can do. So if you're working in an assembly line fashion for your holiday cards this year and you've got kids, put them to work. That's what I say. This is a craft that everybody can take part in. All right, so we've added a little bit of distressing to there. It's not heavy, but it's just enough to bring out the texture. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. I'm going to move my sponge out of the way as well. And I'm going to bring in a piece of thick Whisper White cardstock. And I'm going to pull out my other pieces while I've got a second here. Let me do that. And I'm going to do some stamping on here. I'm going to bring in my Memento ink pad because we're going to be using some Stampin' Blends tonight. I'm going to be using this image that has the cotton in it. So it's very much a fall image. But when I add the milk can to the bottom, I found that it was easier for me to stamp my top first than my bottom. And the reason is, is I'm working within a very specific size piece of cardstock. Now, if obviously if you're creating your card from scratch, you're gonna be able to build and cut around it if that's what you choose to do. This is just the way that I navigate. So I'm gonna ink this up with my Memento ink. It's a detailed image, so take your time, make sure you've got good coverage on there. And then we're going to start here at the top. And I am going to make sure I got that fit in there the very best that I can. Lots of firm, even pressure. Take your time and trace out these detailed images. You want to make sure that you got a good impression. I've got my Stampin' Chamois just off camera. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my stamp. I'm a notorious person for cleaning them right away because if I don't, I get all excited about stamping. And before I know it, I've taken that dirty stamp and I've put it into a yellow ink pad. Oh, that's a disaster. I've got the milk can that's also part of this exact same stamp set. And that's gonna get stamped here at the bottom. Now, God willing, because my head is a good 20 inches away because I stand when I stamp, but usually if you're not here, um, my head is down close to the paper. Seems the older I get, the closer I have to go. <laughs> All right, but that's pretty good. We got pretty close. And then next, there's a small little label, a little oval label. 
Gonna ink that up as well. This is photopolymer stamp. So you're gonna see that the stamp actually turns the color of the ink. Wow, which is just a wonderful thing, especially as I get older and it's getting harder and harder to see those things unless I'm super close. And the stamp set also has lots of varied greetings and you're gonna see different scripts and you're gonna see different sizes. So this has hello and enjoy love and thanks that are small that are intended to fit inside this little label. So I've pulled out the word thanks and we're gonna stamp that inside here. There we go, that's pretty good for being pretty far away. I'm kind of proud of myself at the moment because <laughs> usually I have to have my head up close. Now I'm not gonna color the whole image because I have one that's already finished, but I wanna go over the tips that I have for you so that you can learn a couple things as we're going along. The very first thing I figured out when I made this image was that my cotton was just too white. And I decided, you know what? I wanna give this a little bit of color. So what can I do to give it some color but not take away from the fact that it's supposed to be cotton? So let me zoom you in a little bit closer so you can get a little bit better look. Let me slide that down just a little bit. I'm gonna be using my Stampin' Blends. And whenever you're using your Stampin' Blends, you want to use Memento ink. This is a water-based ink. These are alcohol-based markers, so you won't get that bleeding, all right? The other thing is you wanna use thick Whisper White cardstock. The thick Whisper White cardstock not only is thicker, but the great thing about the heavier poundage of this paper is it's gonna leave you with a much crisper impression and allow you to blend easier. Now the Stampin' Blends are dual-sided. You're gonna see a thick line here underneath the cap, which indicates the brush. There's a thin end here with a thin tip and a thin line. For my cotton, I'm gonna use that chiseled or that fine tip. So I'm gonna take off my cap. The one thing I love about the Stampin' Blends is the caps lock on and off, so you don't have to worry about evaporation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add just a little bit of color down here where those little um, plumes kind of open up. There's probably a real scientific name for those cottons when they pop open, but I don't know it, so I apologize. So I'm adding a little bit of gray there, and I realize that's gonna be really, really hard to see probably in the video, even though I brought in a little bit closer. But the secret to blending this so that it's not so stark in those areas is this. This is the color lifter. And again, I'm gonna use that fine point tip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm literally going to swirl right over where I put that gray. Now the alcohol in this marker is gonna need a few minutes to dissipate, to evaporate. And as it does, you're gonna see that this is gonna create more of a shadow than it does actually provide color. So that's really what we're looking for. We want a little bit of tone there, but we don't wanna actually color the whole cotton in because we wanna make sure we've got some white that's visible. Do you guys see that I missed one right here? I'm gonna add a little bit right there just cause we can, right? So we'll go back and do that and add that in as well. Now, keep your eye on this because if you don't already own the color lifter and you have the Stampin' Blends, you're definitely going to want this. I've got another tip for you with that one in just a minute. Let's move down here now to the bottom of the milk can and I wanna go over some more coloring tips with you. I'm gonna go back to the light Stampin' Blends, but this time I'm gonna use this tip. Now, I've got a disclaimer. I have used the Dickens out of this since they have come out and I've just ordered a replacement. It's working really, really well, but I have really broken in my tip really good. So give me some coloring grace, okay? So I'm gonna work inside of here and I'm going to add some light color to my milk can. Do you see how I'm starting on the outside and I'm flicking color towards the inside? That's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to shade when I'm using the thicker end of the darker color in just a second. And I'm turning this to make it easy for my hand. I always say no contortionist coloring. That makes things really, really hard when you're trying to go like this. So make sure you turn your project. So I'm gonna cover this area with the light Stampin' Blends and I'm gonna come in here a little bit with my handle. Again, it's not gonna be perfect because my head's pretty far away and I'm using that um, really big tip on this side. All right, so I've got a little color to my milk can, which in itself is perfect. The one reason I really love the Stampin' Blends is simply because if you don't want to blend, you don't have to. If you were to have used a marker, a regular dye-based marker, you would have all kinds of streaks in here where the marker stopped and started. That is not the case with the Stampin' Blends because the alcohol dissipates as the color is laid. Now here comes your coloring tips. Here is the dark end. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of shading. Now I get asked a lot, where do you put this? Well, I like to put it along the outside edges and the artist's sketches are always a good idea of where some shading should go. 
but I want to do a little bit more than that tonight. So I'm going to go a little bit in here and you're going to see how I'm just kind of pulling out as well, adding a little on that rim and then down the side and a little bit here. Again, I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to add a little color here. I'm going to skip and I'm going to add a little color here. This doesn't require any skill. It requires just a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, but the end result is so stunning. Now, the secret to blending this, to get rid of those hard and light areas, is by going back to the light color. But I got a tip for you that's coming up about this label. All right, so here we go. We've got the light color again. Start here where the darkest color is laid. And what I want you to do is I want you to pull. Pull and pull. What you're looking to do is you're pulling that dark color into the light color all the way across the paper. You're looking to make that actual break like it is here, literally invisible so that you can't see it. Don't worry about coming all the way to make sure you've got the whole thing colored in because quite frankly, what we're trying to do is we're trying to lend credence to a very much a shaded professional type of image. All right, so I'm gonna turn this again and we're gonna do the same thing on this side and I'm gonna pull. This is a job you can do while you're just watching TV. I love to color, it's therapy, it really is. So I'm gonna come down here and do the same thing and I'm just gonna pull that color in. And again, you know what? If it's your project, it's never wrong. So you can do as much or as little as you'd like. And I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit here. Do you see how we've got some gray around there? All right, but do you see how we've got some beautiful shading right now? We've got some darker edges, but we don't have those hard lines. I want to take off some of that color from the thanks because I want it to look weathered and worn. So I'm going back to my color lifter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swirl right over this. And as that alcohol processes right over that label, you're going to see this start to fade. I am not at all concerned that there are light and dark areas in that label whatsoever because I'm going to imagine that this is, you know, a couple hundred years old maybe and came from an old farming community and I want this to look rustic. All right, so that's going to give you some coloring hints on how you can fill this in. I want to give you one more about these little pods that are here. I'm using the bronze Stampin' Blends. The ivory and the bronze are two of the Stampin' Blends that were intended for flesh tones, but I love this bronze way beyond that. This is just a wonderful product. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use that for my brown, and I'm gonna color those pods in. This is a nice, rich, kind of coppery brown. We do have the brand new Soft Suede, which is really beautiful, but I prefer this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and color this one as well, because I wanna be able to show you what the next step is. And again, what we're gonna do is we are going to use the color lifter. So there goes my cap, snaps right on. And I'm coming back over here to the small tip and I'm gonna swirl right here in the middle. You know what's gonna happen? As that alcohol dissipates and it thins out, that center is gonna look lighter and shadowed. And that's gonna give this a little bit of depth to this image. This requires no artistic skill. Just scribble on the color. And you know what, it's a lot of experimenting. Don't be afraid to experiment. Now just ahead of the video, I finished it. So there we go, we've got one here. No two of your images are ever gonna be exactly alike because each one of them is colored individually. So give yourself a lot of forgiveness. As long as the color palettes are the same, your cards are gonna look extremely similar. And to be quite honest with you, if they go to two different people who know each other, not one person's gonna compare their card to the other. Each is hand colored. All right, so let me set those aside and let's work on the next step. I'm gonna move you out just a little bit so we have a little bit better view. I'm gonna set that one aside. And I have cut myself a piece of crushed curry cardstock. This, believe it or not, is the Dark Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blends. But isn't it interesting how close in color it comes to the Crushed Curry? Another tip for you in coloring is if you are going to purchase the Stampin' Blends, which by the way are uber affordable, $4.50 in the US, or you can get the combo, which of course is the light and the dark, just like we did here with the Smoky Slate for $9. Stampin' Up's price point for these is absolutely wonderful simply because when it's time to ditch them, you just throw them away and you can buy them individually to replace them as needed for $4.50. These are available in my online store. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip, whoops, there go my dimensionals, my adhesive stuck to it. I'm gonna add some adhesive to the back. 
Do you see? This is the sign of a really great alcohol-based marker. You wanna make sure that your work surface is covered because you wanna make sure that that bleeding doesn't go through to the project you have underneath or to your work surface. So I've got a little bit of a border going on here. All right, this is going to go here. So let's turn this over and let's gonna add some dimensionals. But I've got some more tips for you about coloring that are going to involve that Stampin' Blends in just one second. And hang with me to the end of the video because I've got other cards to share with you using this exact same suite of products. I'm taking off that paper backing that reveals the other sticky side. And you know what? Here's another tip while we're together just because, I don't know about you guys, do you ever find these little dimensional pieces like everywhere? And I shared this once in a video, but my little sticky ruler is like the best thing since bread because you know what? It just picks them all up. <laughs> And I'm sure most of you have this in the house, um, probably use it on your clothes for lint, but it keeps all those little dimensional pieces all tamed. All right, so this is gonna go right here on this side. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room on the left side because we're gonna do a little bit more to this card. I have a confession to make. I pulled out this really pretty satin ribbon because I was like, oh, that matches so perfectly. And you know what I realized? It's retired. I didn't even realize that. I don't even know how it got stuck in with my current stuff, but maybe because I just liked it so much. But you know what? I know that you keep Stampin' Up! retired products just because I don't, but you do. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna teach you another coloring tip tonight to show you how you can customize some ribbons. So I'm gonna put this one aside and I've cut myself a piece, a small piece, and this is the classic white weave ribbon, all right? We are going to use that Stampin' Blends one more time. This is still the dark Daffodil Delight and I am using the brush tip. I'm using the brush tip because it's the broadest. Again, make sure your work surface is covered. Now I did this earlier today, so I'm double covering it on purpose. You are gonna come in and you are going to color your ribbon. This is gonna work for any light colored ribbon and any color Stampin' Blends. So no longer do you have to worry about, oh wow, I don't have that color ribbon for my card. Now what do I do? Well, you know, as long as you're not making a hundred of them, this is totally doable. Again, another project the kids can help you with. You're gonna to wanna to flip this classic weave over because this one is not like a satin, so it won't bleed and penetrate the paper, or I'm sorry, the ribbon as well. So you're gonna to wanna to color both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cover that up. Does it absorb the ink? Of course it does. And it's gonna take a few seconds for that alcohol to dissipate and for it to dry. But I have one that I did just ahead of the video. And here we are. Here it is all nice and dry. It does leave a little bit of a stiffer finish because of the alcohol. So all I did was kind of play with it and it literally just went away. And I don't know if that's from the oils from my hands, but it's not stiff and it's not difficult to use. So let me show you what we're gonna do with this. I've got the brand new galvanized clips here. I love anything that looks farmhouse and vintage. This is so much fun. Megan is keeping busy keeping up with all of our live comments. Thank you, Megan, I appreciate that. The one thing about these clips that I found out is when they're manufactured, there's really no room inside of here to get your cardstock in there. So I'm gonna give you another tip. I'm gonna pull out my paper piercing mat here because I wanna make sure I don't stab myself on camera. That wouldn't be pretty. This is my pickup tool. I have my paper piercing tool on this end. All I'm going to do is I'm going to push back on this just a little bit to try to help loosen this up. I found, and I know you're not gonna be able to see really well because I wanna make sure that I'm holding it, but I found if I was able to loosen this up a little bit, I was able to get it on my paper. And of course, because you're watching me, it's not working as well as it did before you joined me. Doesn't that figure? I don't know why, some days it's just really hard when people are watching you, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so let's open this up a little bit more the old-fashioned way. I am going to slip this here on the side, the one that I'm gonna have on my blog tomorrow, which is gonna include all the cutting dimensions for this card and the supplies, is clipped from the top. All I did was fold this a different way. So we've got our little clip on here. You can see that it's got a nice finished inside. Here's that ribbon. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tie this in a knot, working that small end through here. I'm gonna pull it tightly because I wanna make sure that it doesn't come unraveled. And I've got a glue dot here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a glue dot here to the back of the knot. Make sure you stay with me. I've got more cards to share with you. And I'm gonna tack that here to the side. Now, would you have ever known that this was not ribbon that we bought? 
and look how well it matches. Isn't that beautiful? I'm loving that because you know what? Now you don't ever have to worry about not having the right ribbon for your projects anymore. Just break out those Stampin' Blends. Absolutely love these. The cards I wanna share with you next are all part of my card kit that I offer every single month. And what's called Stamps in the Mail. It's a way for you to stamp with me from home. I'm pulling them out right now. I provide the card kit to you absolutely free when you place any $50 product order using the exclusive Stamps in the Mail host code. So you're gonna make a total of eight cards. You're gonna make two of everything I'm gonna show you here. So two of this one. I'm gonna include the galvanized button. I'm gonna have them embossed for you. You'll get the designer paper and the cardstock. You're gonna make two of this one. This one's kind of like a little 3D level here. Isn't that pretty? You're gonna be able to use your supplies that you have at home, or if you want to duplicate them exactly like you see here, I have a list of supplies listed over on my blog and then two of this one. So this will be a total of eight cards, two, 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 and two. I also include envelopes, but the best part of stamps in the mail with me is that it's gonna be enabling you to stamp right along with me from home. I decided to turn that camera around so you don't have to look at my talking hands. I provide a video so you can stamp step-by-step step right along with me, and you're also going to get a PDF tutorial. My PDF tutorials include multiple pictures of each card, cutting dimensions, a list of supplies, and step-by-step -step instructions. So whether you're a visual person or you prefer to look at written pictures, uh, written instructions with pictures, I've got you covered both ways. The tutorials are fantastic because you can save them and use those layouts with other stamp sets. Now, many people have told, um, have told me, oh gosh, Lisa, please have the tutorial available. I, I don't necessarily want stamps in the mail. That's fine. I do have just the PDF tutorial available. I see Amy's asking that question. Yes, it's over on my blog. So all the information about stamps in the mail for these card kits is on my blog at lisasstampstudio.com. You're gonna to wanna to click on the online classes tab and there you'll see stamps in the mail. If you navigate there, you'll find um, a picture that says if you want just the PDF tutorial, you can click there. It's also in my PDF tutorial library. So stamps in the mail is a great way for you to stamp with me. The video is wonderful, step-by-step step, through every step of the way. You don't have to have stamping experience because I'm gonna walk you through the whole process from start to finish. It's loaded with tips. There are some of you here that are actually um, Stamps in the Mail customers. I can see your names on the screen. So I know that you've enjoyed it. I appreciate those orders. Here's the best part. You don't have to order the supplies that I used. You can supplement with what you have at home. Obviously, we are using the Country Home stamp set on these cards. So you might want to definitely get that. You may want some of the Stampin' Blends. You might want them all. You may have another coloring medium that you prefer. That works as well. Anything that you want to order, you may. It's any $50 order. I provide a lot of flexibility. Another question is, is this a club? Is there a monthly obligation? Absolutely not. You can pick and choose the card kits that you like and purchase um, your ordering supplies accordingly. Now that special host code is only good for four days and it's ending on Saturday. So you must order before Saturday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's September 15th. And I have a promised mail date to get all those kits in the mail to you no later than September 22nd, which is the following Saturday. I usually get them in the mail sooner than that, depending on how many kit orders there were. However, I promise no later than the 22nd. Now here's something else. All my Stamps in the Mail customers also get an added bonus, and that's Live with Lisa. That's a closed Facebook group event where I provide numerous live demonstrations to create projects with you. You watch, I demonstrate. I also give you a bundle of tutorials. There's usually eight. And I also do product prize patrol. So I do product random giveaways. Now, if you're not on Facebook, don't worry. Just let me know when you place your stamps in the mail order, and I'll be happy to send you the video recording, the tutorials via email, and of course, your name is still in the product prize drawing, whether you're on Facebook or not. A lot of people have also asked me, well, how do I get into Live with Lisa? Is it only stamps in the mail? And the answer is no. Believe it or not, just a $25 product order before shipping and tax qualifies you for each month's 
live with Lisa and it's different every single month and it's lots of fun. It's a smaller group, it's lots more interactive and I provide lots of inspiration as well of course the free tutorials as well. So that's really a good time. I hope that you've liked tonight's card. It's really simple and easy. And you know what? I think my little kind of crooked background is not so bad after all once we've got that image um, put here on the card. If you have questions that um, Megan hasn't caught, I will comment underneath the replay comments and, and answer your questions for you. But I hope that you've enjoyed this. The Country Home um, stamp set is probably one of my favorites in the catalog. That whole Country Lane suite is fantastic. Before we go, I wanna make sure that you know that all the pictures and cutting dimensions for this card are gonna be on my blog tomorrow, okay? So you're gonna be able to head over to Lisa's Stamp Studio tomorrow and get all that information for you there. Again, the products are all available in my online store. Remember, if you're going to order the Stamps in the Mail card kit, you must use the exclusive Stamps in the Mail host code. It's the only way I know you're entitled to the free kit. If you have enjoyed tonight's video, please give it a thumbs up. That's a like. It makes YouTube happy, and of course, it makes me happy. Share the video on other social media platforms and with your stamping friends. And I would love it if you would head over to my blog and sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter. There I provide you with a tutorial that I don't share on any of my other platforms and I hope that you'll enjoy that as a freebie and just a thank you and subscribe to my blog I'd love to have you join and if you haven't subscribed to me here on YouTube subscribe I would love to have you join us we upload numerous videos every single week and I love sharing my inspiration with you I'm going to be back live with you on Monday September 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time I hope that you'll be able around to uh, join Megan and I Thank you guys so much for being here. And for all of you on the Eastern Seaboard, please know that you are in our prayers for a um, safe outcome from this hurricane. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.